I always begin my stretching for sitting practice with a standing exercise and I'll get into that position now. I basically support myself on my knees like this, stand on the floor, and then I lower myself like this until I can until I get a stretch in this area of the body here, just underneath the glutes actually. I'm still supporting myself on my hands and I wriggle the hips from side to side like this, just feeling what the body f is feeling like today. And then I reach my fingers down to the floor like this and you'll notice that I'm letting my head hang as well. So the back of the neck is completely relaxed. And then watch, we call this the elephant walk and it'll become obvious why. I slowly try to straighten one leg at a time, like this. Notice I'm not actually straightening the legs, that'll come a bit later. This is an exploratory movement to find out what the body is feeling like. Now as you do this a few times, and this is early in the morning for me, you'll find after a while you will be able to straighten your legs. Now if you're not as flexible as I am, by all means, have your cushion or something in place like this, and you can do exactly the same exercise, like this. And as you become more flexible, you'll find simply that the body will be closer to your legs, like this. But the idea here is just momentary leg straightening actions and then relax. Also you can wriggle around a bit, that's a very pleasing sensation today. Oh, that's lovely in fact. And I'm lowering my body a bit further. A bit further. Now notice I'm not straightening my legs. I am simply doing the swaying backwards and forwards. And in the beginning, and for sitting practice, that's all you need to do. And then, lower yourself like this. And keep your feet flat on the floor. Now, if you can't actually hold your body in this position easily, then I recommend holding onto something like a heavy table's leg, or something like that that won't move. And basically, by pulling yourself forward, you'll be able to hold a squat position. But it's very important to have the ankle and the arch shape preserved properly and it's also important to have the feet more or less pointing straight ahead. Now that can be as technically as this or if your hips are more comfortable being a bit wider apart you can turn the feet out like this and then we're just going to stay here for a couple of moments and feel what happens in the body as you do that. And this will be exactly the same whether you're holding on to something or whether you're doing it in free space as I am. What I'm doing is I'm shifting my weight from side to side and what I feel is a bit of a stretch in the lower back and also a bit of a stretch in the ankles as well. Now what I'm doing is I'm making circles with my knees and in the process of making circles with my knees I'm going from the inside of one foot and the outside of the other and alternating that so I'm making circles in this direction first and then I'll change it and make circles in this direction a second. Now really feel what's happening in the body here. As a stretch, this is very good for the lower back and my hips today in particular, and it's a little bit of a stretch for the ankles as well. Then make your trunk as straight as you can, and then very gently put the elbows inside the knees like this and just watch pull the hands back towards the chest like this and that will spread your knees apart. And then we repeat everything that we've done in this position here. By spreading the knees apart like this we're starting to stretch the adductors. We can make that a bit stronger by simply bringing the elbows closer back towards the hip joints. One of the reasons this limbering sequence can be so wonderful when you're sitting for meditation is that 
you can be sure, and I speak from long experience here, and so anyone else who's meditated will know this is true, any pain you have in your body at the beginning of the sitting would be magnified enormously by the end. So what we're doing in this whole process here, and even just by simply hanging around in a squat position like this, is we're actually loosening the tight bit. So what's the next stage is simply to reach your arms forward like this, and you'll see on this camera that in this position here, my back is being stretched now. That feels absolutely marvellous today. Wriggle around, little stretching movements. And you can even put an elbow inside the leg like this and push this leg out and turn your shoulders like this. A little rotation movement, turn the shoulders like this. Uh, it just feels fantastic. And then once you've had enough of that, and let's say a couple of minutes in this position is ideal, then I'll move the cushion and the mat back into position like so. And we begin to construct a loose meditation position. Now it doesn't matter which leg you bring forwards in the beginning because we're going to do both sides. So I'm going to sit like this today. And the first thing I'm going to do is simply shift my hips from side to side like this. And notice I've got this hand, because I'm a bit tight in this area of the body today, I've got this hand here and I'm pressing myself away like this and that's loosening this area and then on the other side hand up near the root of the thigh and press the body across like this roll the shoulders back and press press and do that a couple of times and what we're looking for is whatever bits are tight today, and I'm deliberately moving around like this, the goal of this limbering sequence is simply to render the body alive and also to have your awareness in the whole body itself. I need to just do a little bit more on this side today, so I'm going to hold the front of my shin and slowly... Oh, that's beautiful. Now I've been doing this sort of thing for quite a while now. I recommend strongly that if you haven't been doing this for a long while that you take it very easy in the beginning and although I'm moving quite slowly now you may choose in your own practice to move even more slowly. That's lovely. Okay, so that's the side side with a tiny amount of rotation in it. Now watch walk yourself forwards on your hands like this and you should be able to see on this camera that I'm holding my back as straight as I can I've lifted my chest slightly as well and what I'm doing is I'm moving pelvis and trunk forwards in between the two thigh bones so we're revolving around the hip joints don't bend your back like this trying to do it in the beginning we will have better stretches for the back later on so just like this And wherever you can come to, let's say this is as far forward as you can come, then I normally just rest my head on my fist like this. And then as I get a bit looser, like this, and then eventually you'll be on the ground like this. And that's actually a lovely stretch for the whole of my spine as well, but my bottom is still on the cushion. Then I'm going to lift myself up like this. And I'm walking around on my hands, small steps. And remember, if this is the first thing you're going to be doing on a meditation retreat or when you sit at home, this will be first thing in the morning. So move very gently and have all of your awareness in what's happening inside the body. I'm letting myself down and pull the whole body rests on my thigh. And again, I'm just going to make some small movements. This line is a little bit tight today, so I'll just rest here for a second. And then I'm going to walk myself around to the other side. But notice I am not moving into the position from a, from a low position. I'm not staying low all the way around. I bring myself back on my arms like this. And slowly move forward into this position. Again, you can put your hands 
together like this and lean your head on if that's more comfortable for you or a bit further down if you're a bit more flexible and again try these little movements just to see what the body needs today and lift yourself back up I'm going to go back forward to get down but this time I'm going to put my hands underneath the knees like this so that as I lean forwards I can actually keep the whole back straight as you can probably see in that other angle and then I can actually pull myself down to the ground like this and that will get you a much stronger stretch keep the keep the back as straight as you can and I've just got my thumbs underneath my knees and I'm pulling myself down to the ground and then breathe in to come up and then we'll check the other side now changing the legs, it might not seem like a big deal, but when you go to each side again, you're going to find that it feels quite different. So I'm going to I keep the same order, and I can feel it's just completely different in the lower back on this side when I've changed my legs over. Also another way, if you're a little bit tired, you can pull yourself straight by holding onto the front of the knee here like this. So oh, it's lovely today. And again, we get to the point where the whole body is resting on the leg here. Can I lift myself back up. Make sure the bottom stays on the cushion. Turn around to this leg now. Take a breath in. And slowly reach the body forward like this. And again, do a little turning movement. That'll work you in here until the body feels completely comfortable then lift yourself back up settle yourself put the hands inside the knees as before I've got basically my thumb is able to pull up on the back of my knee and, and my hands with the fingers spread are balancing me I straighten my back as straight as I can get it I take a breath in and stick the bottom out too as another cue to help you Keep the lower back as straight as you can and then go forward as far forward as you can comfortably. Breathe in. Use your arms to lift yourself up and again move around a little bit. The next position is a fundamental flexibility position and it looks like this. Make sure you've got plenty of material around the groin. Keep the bottom on the cushion like this. And try to pull the knees down to the ground using your bottom muscles. Now often you can't feel how to do that. So put the hands underneath the knees, lift them slightly, and then press the knees down into the hands while holding them in that position. You'll be able to feel that strongly. And then, when you go back to doing this, you'll find that you'll be able to press the knees down to the ground, like this. Also, work on pulling the body forwards gently. Now again, don't bend the back. We've got better stretching exercises for the back than this one. This too, if you watch the hips and the trunk together, I'm moving the hip and the trunk together, just like the previous exercise between the hip joints. But this time, the feet and the legs are spreading the knees much more widely apart and so it's more intense. So, like so, little movements. Now I've, got, I've come down far enough so that I can press my elbows in against my um, legs here. So now while holding my toes I can actually push back against the elbows and that helps me straighten the back as you can see. And I breathe, relax, get down a bit lower, breathe and relax. <sighs> breathe and relax. You can do little contractions too. You can try to push the feet together gently. This is a limbering session, so nothing too intense here. And also you might find that you can lift the legs up against your arms too. It's a different contraction. And then eventually the legs will go down on the ground like this or something close to that. And once you've gone as far forward as you can, then just do little wriggling movements like this. And 
and relax. Now there is a stronger version of this which I'll just show briefly. Um, for those of you that want something a bit stronger, I'll just move the, the blanket and the cushion out of the way. Just this version here I like very much. I balance on my ankles like so and I pull my legs down to the ground like so and in this position here, by balancing in this position, I'm actually getting an extremely good stretch in everything that we want to loosen. So as you get a bit more flexible, you might care to try that as well. Now, while I've got the, the mat empty, so to speak, I want to show you um, what are probably the most important muscles to stretch. And we're going to do this in two different ways. But there's a muscle in the hip, which if you're not flexible, this muscle in the hip here actually stops you doing this here. If you find that you're sitting like this, then you're slumped. Um, well, of course, that's what the, the pillows are, are designed to help, and we'll talk more about that later. But it's actually these muscles here that are stopping you doing this action, and that's what we're going to stretch now. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways. One way of doing it, the easiest way, is to put this leg across here, hold it like so. See how the hip comes off the ground a little bit? And press the hip back down onto the ground, and lift your chest like this and try and bring that knee underneath this armpit. However, you need to be reasonably flexible in the hamstrings to do this. We have other versions, but the next more difficult version is like this. The one I prefer, again, this hip here, press onto the ground, and then think about lifting your chest along the leg in this direction, so it would look like this. I pull my body towards the leg and that bends the back and then I simply lift the chest along the leg like this while keeping that hip pressed into the ground. You can try, as it loosens, you can try pulling the knee underneath the armpit more, straightening the back more, and getting into a tighter position will all help to loosen this muscle. Now let me show you what that looks like on the other side. And the other side is my tight side. So I'll do the straight leg version first. Everything else looks exactly the same. Like so. Laying the body. Make sure this hip is pressed on the ground firmly. And then lift the chest along the leg. Also, See if you can feel how to do this. As you breathe in and out deeply, you'll be pressing the hip from the inside. And that's the feeling you should feel. And the next more intense version, if that one feels fine, like this. Breathe in, slump, hold. Notice I'm using a slightly different grip here, and then lift the chest along the leg and bring the leg as close under the armpit as you can and then breathe into the inside of the hip ah that feels wonderful and again while we have the cushion off the mat. We'll then move into the next set of exercises that works the instep and quadricep. And for me personally, um, if you're using one of those meditation stools to sit on, this will make that whole exercise much easier. Now here's the sequence. Push the calf muscle out of the way like this and bring this hip down onto the floor as close as you can. Now if in fact you find that your hips are tilted like this because the quads are really tight, then simply bring the cushion underneath the other hip like this. I'm going to use it myself today. Like so, and that way you, it's very easy to get the, the correct position. And the correct position means top of the thighs facing the, the, uh, the ceiling. Make sure the foot is pointing straight back like this. And to stretch the insteps, simply move like this. Now be aware that your body knows how to cheat. And so it'll attempt to do this, to move away,
from here in order to unweight that instep. So what you do instead is you shift some weight, in this case towards the camera like this, and that will make it intense. Now if you're very tight, if you want to add a little contraction here, just a gentle one, you can try pulling the toes through the floor like this towards the knee for a count of three, two, one. Relax the foot completely, lean a bit more weight on it, and then lift the knee up like this. And you can see that now a part of the foot further down towards the toes is now pressing against the floor. And in, and in this way, in time, your ankles will loose up, loosen up in this direction. Knee down on the ground, and just in case your feet are cramped up, which is very common doing this exercise, put the foot into this position like this, and press the knee forward. Just pressing the knee forward will do all that needs to be done. We'll do that on the other side. Lean, fold the leg, press the calf muscles out of the way. Put the cushion underneath the other hip. Just rest there for a moment, feeling what today that feels like today. Be aware the body is different, in fact, every day, it's different every minute, it's just we don't take notice of these things. Then lean back. Do the little contraction, pull the toes through the floor, gently, just the tiniest amount, it's a limber session, not a stretching session. Lean back a bit more. You can always put a hand out here too to stabilise yourself if your balance is not so good. The purpose is simply to have as much weight on this hip as you can, and as much of that going through the foot as you can. <sighs> Lovely. Like this, lean away, straighten the legs, and now we'll move back to the first side to stretch quadricep itself. So again, like this. like this. Now I'm bringing this foot up to help me put weight here but also too if you're a bit more flexible and you need a bit more stretch you can just simply lean back on something like this and then watch tuck the tail, I'm using my glutes to do that, or pull this knee back towards your chest like that and that will add a considerable intensity to the stretch and then simply relax. You can also, I find it very pleasant in the body to move this leg around. It changes the stretch in the folded leg completely as I do this. Oh, it's lovely today. And lean away. Fold this leg. Calf muscle out of the way. Lean back onto it. I'll put this foot into position first. That's always the first step. And also, as I mentioned before, the body is different every day, so just feel what it feels like today and decide whether or not you need anything more intense. If you're getting a good stretch here, then you may not need anything more intense. And at the end of this video, I'll show you a standing exercise to do as well if your knees won't actually allow you to sit in this position. So then, we lean back onto the cushion, and as we did before, move this knee around and try and pull the knee back to the chest if you need more stretch, which I do today. Rock around. Lovely. And like so, and like so. And we'll just go back to that first side again. We'll try something a little bit different here. So lean back, but this time I'm going to put this foot on here and open out this and I can do an, a different kind of contraction now. I can lift this leg off the ground while this foot's holding it in position like so and then tuck the tail or bring the knee back like this in order to effect a, a decent additional stretch in the top part of the thigh here. So from the other side it looks like this. Always push the calf muscle out of the way like so. Bring him back and then tuck the tail, relax, open the leg out as much as possible. Then try and lift 
this folded leg off the floor and relax tuck the tail and or bring this knee back and each time you reapproach these stretches you'll find that the body will give a little bit more and so by the time we get to this point here your, your quad should be feeling considerably looser and should be nice and soft okay now the lunging sequence which is another very important sequence for sitting looks something like this I'll show you this on the other side as well a number of different aspects to it the key one is getting into a position something like this and watch I'm exaggerating the movements here if this is the starting position I'm using my arms to gently pull both hips forward and in the process of going forward see how they go down towards the floor and you'll feel quite a strong stretch in here and then you watch you can roll across to the outside of the front of the hip do some little movements here you'll find that very pleasant the middle position like this and then for me personally my favorite is the inside position because that stretches me where i'm tightest like that oh beautiful and then the second part of this pose while we're in this position is simply to let your arm bend as much as you can while keeping this leg as close to the body as you can and in time you'll be able to get down something like this but don't be in a rush oh that's lovely and then bring the hips back out of that position fold the back leg like so don't pull the heel into the bottom too closely just now watch do the same pulling action forward like this but because the back leg is folded you'll find the stretch much stronger and gently do move around as we did before inside of the thigh middle of the thigh that's lovely outside of the thigh for me that has almost no effect but the inside one here is honestly sensational and then as you get looser simply pull the foot in a bit tighter and if you find a tight line and you want to stay there for a bit just do exactly what I'm doing now, no movement but watch, take a breath in and on a breath out simply let yourself sink to the floor come out and I'll turn around and show you what that looks like on the other side so wriggle around until you find the tight line or the center position and then simply pull yourself forward like this I just love that sensation again roll to the outside middle and as I mentioned my favorite inside like this oh that's just beautiful Take a breath in, big breath in, and again don't exaggerate this. This is meant to be a relaxing, lingering session, not some intense, flat out yoga session. Breathe, come back, push the hips back, fold the back leg like so, hold with the opposite arm, and once again go through basic movements now that's a very tight line for me today probably because of what I did yesterday and so I'm going to just simply breathe into this position and let my body relax into it and then feel that muscle letting go again in this session don't force anything we're actually trying to find out what the body needs today to make it feel most comfortable that's all we're concerned about Next, go to the inside of the leg, pull forward a bit. Make sure you keep your front foot or the front foot that's closest to your head under or in front of the knee. Middle position, and as I mentioned, outside position like so. And push yourself out of that. And then, once in this position here, lift yourself up like so. And 
I'm leaning on this leg and the foot is pointing straight back behind me and I'm moving both hips towards this foot here. Then I'm going to turn this leg inside slightly by moving this foot across, just that tiny amount. And when you move towards this foot uh, as, again in this new revised position, you'll feel as different muscles in the hip are being stretched here. Same here, different again. This looks more like what we were just doing a second ago. So we'll move through that position, but then watch, let the whole body move to the side and let the side of the leg go down towards the floor. And what I'm doing here, using this arm in position, and if your arms aren't long enough, or you want a stronger stretch, of course, put it on your cushion like this. Now watch, as I lower this part of the body to the floor, I'm getting an excellent stretch in the waist. And we call this little movement boxing the compass because we go from all the positions of the hips. So we start here, 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 and end up here. But on the other side that would look like this. That's a very strong stretch for the adductors on this leg. Watch, turn the leg slightly, so I'm internally rotating it. Make, I'm creeping this foot a bit further forward. Turn, a bit further. Turn, a bit further, a bit further. Back to the basic quad hip flexor stretch position, and then... Oh, that's lovely today. When you get used to working with your body in this way, there is such an enormous pleasure to be had in simply making these movements. That feels sensational. While we're here, something else, we'll just go to take a little lying position like this. Now, if you find that your lower back muscles cramp up when you do this, try getting into a position like this. Lie on your side, put this elbow in position, and use this arm to lift yourself up, bring the other elbow back, and then just sink into the position. It should be a very, very gentle stretch now that we've actually stretched the quads and hip flexors. And then I can gently pull my ribs forward like this, by pulling my elbow back to my hips, but friction holds in position, and then sink like this. That's lovely, and for, for sitting practice, that's probably as far as you need to bend the spine backwards. Of course, we've got much more dramatic exercises, but this whole sequence is meant to leave the body feeling relaxed. So that's what we call an elbow cobra, or an elbow back bend, and we can do a slightly, we can do a sideways one as well, which is done like this stretch your legs out, bring this hand under the shoulders like this, lift the legs off the ground, straighten the legs, and then watch what I'm doing, gently lowering myself. And watch this, my right shoulder comes up to my ear, but in the process, I'm keeping my hips square with the shoulders, in the process I'm getting an absolutely sensational waist stretch. You can also wriggle around a bit here. That's lovely. and turn the hips to come out. I'll show you what that looks like on the other side. Do it gently. I'm putting my hand on the edge of the, the mat here to make sure I've got enough altitude and you can always use the cushion too if you're not, if the proportion doesn't suit this exercise. But for me today here, that's actually enough sideways bend. This hand is stabilizing me and I'm leaning off this hand back towards my feet in order to stretch the muscles of the waist here. Oh, that's beautiful. Wriggle around a bit and come out. Let's see. Oh, that's very nice. Now, the most important exercise of all for sitting practice I mentioned the name of the muscle before, piriformis, but now I'm going to show you how to stretch it deeply and properly. We put the blanket on that 
quadrant of the mat and the cushion like so. Now watch, I'm going to lift myself up, put my bottom on the cushion like so. I check the angle of the knee, it needs to be 90 degrees. That gives us the maximum stretch for the, in, for the torque that the knee is going to experience. I then take a breath in and on a breath out, lower myself using this hand for support and this arm to here. And once my chest is near this knee here, I'm going to reach this knee backwards as far as possible. And then lift myself up on my hands like this, bring myself across to what we call the mid shin position, so halfway down the leg. The centre of my body I'm aiming at this point here and I then slowly go sideways across to that point. I straighten my back as much as I can. I'm also trying to bring this hip as far forward as possible. And you may need a higher support than this if you're really tight. Uh, make every effort you can to master this exercise because honestly this is a big one for sitting. It allows you to have the pelvis sitting vertically if it's loose enough. And then watch simply go down, I'm wriggling around a bit because it feels good today and again you can use the fist as support and you need to stay in this position for a moment or so so those, so those muscles can actually relax if you're more flexible then simply bring yourself across to your foot like this and I'm holding the heel here to stop the knee angle closing, that's critical see it's still 90 and then watch I'm straightening my back like so and then gently going down holding my head like this first. I can feel those muscles letting go now. I'm recording this first thing in the morning too to make it as real as possible. When you're exercising at 4 or 4.30 in the morning the body is definitely a different proposition then. And then slowly straighten the back, wriggle. That's probably enough for today. And then I'll show you what this looks like on the other side. Simply move the cushion up to the other corner. Turn and face away from you. Put this hip on the cushion like this. I might just move it back a tiny touch, like so. Take a breath in, and on a breath out, lean forward. And what that does, leaning forward, slackens these muscles completely and allows you to get this leg back in line with the front leg. Then lift yourself up on your arms, move yourself around to here like this, mid-shin line once again, holding the heel, and watch bringing this hip across like this. Take a breath in, and on a breath out, lower yourself with your arms, and again, slowly. Do these things slowly so the body can get used to it. And as the hip loosens off, simply straighten the back like this. Now in that position, I'm getting a very strong stretch in my left hip, but because I haven't gone too far, it's perfectly tolerable. And I've done this a lot of times before, so the body knows this is no threat. But in the beginning, you may find that the body finds that extremely threatening. So move even more slowly than I did. And... Excellent. Lift up. Always lift up to change your position. Come more over the foot. Square the hips up more. Straighten the back. This is my tighter hip. It was very sore yesterday and today. Again, body changes every day. You don't read about it much and people don't talk about it much, but the body's a different proposition every day. They treat it as something brand new every day. Oh, that's excellent. And then lift yourself up like so. Now watch to stretch this area here. Slide off your hips so this hip is on the foot, 
and the other one's on the, on the mat. I've got my shoulders in this plane here. I'm holding onto my knee gently to stop myself going back. So I find the center position and then watch. Lean to this side here like this. That's the easy version of the stretch. To make it more intense, simply reach this arm out. And to make it more intense, pull the arm out. Boy, I can actually rest my head on this shoulder too when I do that. And then gently move to the side. Can you see I'm moving backwards and forwards too, just to find today's tight line? When you go past a certain point forwards, there isn't any more stretch. So then, lift yourself back up onto your feet like this. Slide yourself in the other direction. Here you can already see the hips are tilted, that's the whole point. Hold on to that knee, move back and forwards a few times. Lean the body to the side, make sure the shoulders are in the same plane as the hips. And the easy version is simply to reach the arm up and out like this. And then as you get more practice at the movement, pull the arm out of the body and I'm inclining the top shoulder towards the camera as I keep going in the exercise and as we do this movement, the rolling movement, it transfers the stretch from the outside of the waist more into the lower back. So I spend a few moments doing that and then kneeling on all fours like so. Now we're going to do, oh it just feels so nice. We're going to do some uh, cat and dog type movements. It might be easier if I show it in this position here like this. We'll do a few different things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to hunch over like this. And then arch back like this. Hunch over like this. And back like this. And just feel what those movements feel like. Don't make any particular effort. And then, one that you might not have seen before, is follow a line around the floor like this and see if you can see whether you have a tail today or not. So notice I'm not turning the head, I'm actually bending the spine to the side. So try doing that. Try to look around the opposite heel. And then, we can make these movements considerably stronger, so just watch this. We hunch over like this, and then I'm thinking about pushing my hands away from me. Just watch what that does to the pose. It makes it much tighter, and I can also tuck my tail at the same time. And you can see how that rounds everything much more strongly. Relax. And in the same way we can make this movement stronger. Once you get to here, Set yourself, take a breath in, and then think about pulling the hands back to you, like back to here, and watch what that does. So that's what I'm doing with my back muscles. Then when I pull the hand back like this, you can probably see it's quite a lot stronger movement. And so we can go from pushing to pulling, pushing, pulling. That just feels magnificent. And same with this, we can add a little twist using the arms. And twist, and twist, and twist, and then, still with the knees in the same position, reach the arms out like this, have the hips above the knees, and have your arms at a comfortable position apart, some people's shoulders don't like this position, and by all means if you wanted to rest your head on something, bring your pillow in position, and if you're a bit more flexible, just like this, but the idea here is we're reaching the arms off the body as far as we can. It's an active stretch. We're not just resting on the shoulders. Well, personally, I think that's lovely. Then I'm going to move this hand to here, this to here, and trap this hand, trap, 
trap my right hand and gently pull my body back while I drop that shoulder. That becomes a lovely stretch for the muscles under the arms. And if I show you that on the other side, it looks like this, like this, and like this. Oh. And relax. Next, bring your cushion into position. Now you have a choice, and my cushion is this rather unusual shape here. I'm from pumping it up to make it a bit higher. If you don't like the sensation of your neck bending backwards, you might want to have something else resting here like a pillow or something, but let me show you what we're going to do next. Let's see. Turn the face away from you. I bring my chin into my chest. I lower myself onto the cushion. And I want the cushion, or the, the, the thickest part of the cushion, to be roughly underneath my shoulder blade, so I'm moving away from you. I lift the hips up. Now you'll see, if you look at the hold of my spine, it's perfectly straight now. I hold my head, and I lower it like this, slowly, until it's resting on something comfortably. Then I reach my arms out like this, and only then do I lower my hips. And as you can see, just by wriggling around, you can get a beautiful, beautiful gentle bend in the middle and upper back. And I just remind you, if your neck muscles don't like being in this position, just simply have a cushion that holds the head in a position like this, but personally mine likes it. And I've stretched my arms out as far as I can. I'm reaching actively off the body, and then just let the arms relax. And I'm also telling myself to breathe into this part of the chest here. Just watch, I'll put my hand here. Just watch how much you can move it with the breath. If I breathe out, it looks like this. Breathe in. The tactile sensation really makes a difference. So hold your own chest like that, breathe into it, and then lie back. And then what I like to do is I like to roll the legs from side to side, like this. It feels very nice with my lower back while I'm in this position. You can make that stronger by putting the leg over the top of this one here like this. And you can see that makes it a much stronger rotation in the whole of the spine and pelvis. And if I do the other side, you should be able to see that too. Ah. and then go back to rolling around. Now coming out of the pose, it's, it, there's a, it's important to do that in a particular way as well. The first thing is, run your hand back to the back of your head like this. Slide the finger, the head's still resting on the floor, slide the fingers underneath the back of the head, and don't even think about lifting your head off the ground. Instead, bring your chin into your chest like this. And that will allow you to come up into this position here really easily and gently. And then we simply roll off cushion. I'm going to show you a lovely stretch for the mid lower and or the middle and upper back first, and then the lower back in a moment. This is an absolute personal favourite. If you're working at a computer a lot, this will absolutely save you. Oh, that's just beautiful. What I do is I move my feet closer and closer to me and can you see that I'm now resting on this bone on the floor eventually, it's called the sacrum. I'll just move back and show you that like this. Now that's a sensational stretch for me, I'm actually hanging off my arms, hanging off them so the shoulder blades are being pulled fully forward. I'm moving the feet back so that I can tip the pelvis back as far as possible and watch that adds a little rotation, so you can try pressing one leg away from the and then the other way, feel what that feels like. You can try slumping a bit more vigorously. And last of all, take a breath in and watch while staying slumped, pull your face to the mid thigh line, and that will give you a very strong stretch in the middle and the upper back. and sit up like so. Now to stretch the lower back out, and a lot of people have a lot of tension in the lower back, 
do this. It looks like a very badly done forward bend, but it's not at all. The idea here is to use the strength of the legs to tilt this part of the body backwards. So what we do is we reach forward like this, bring the heels into, into a closer position. The more flexible you are, the more you need to have the leg bent. That's the paradox. Now watch. I'm pushing the top of my hips back just by trying to straighten my legs. And then I alternate leg straightening. Alternate, 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 a bit further back. Pull forward a bit as well, if that helps. But the idea is, I'm exaggerating the speed of these movements just to show you, but the idea is to push the hips back. Push the hips back. Until you find that nice line. I'm just moving around to feel what everything feels like right now. It, it's feeling excellent. So what we'll do, I'll get into a... I'll sit in this position for a moment. If this is comfortable for you to sit in, if, it's, if this is not a comfortable position, then by all means sit cross-legged. It won't make much of a difference to the effect of the exercises to the neck. Now, we begin by, watch, turning. Now, what will happen is you'll get to here and your mind will say, well, that's it. My neck can't go any further, but watch. Take a breath in, and as you breathe out, turn the head further. And again, the mind will say, well, it won't go any further than that. And watch the shoulder too, don't let it come forward. Take another breath in, and now, you'll be amazed when you do this for the first time, if you haven't done that before, just the extent how much further you can get. And so, on the other side, it's, Turn as far as you can, hold that shoulder, take a breath in. Turn further, breathe out, take another breath in. And turn further still, and always go back to the first side. Then, sideways, neck stretches. Firstly, be aware that this muscle here, the pectoral muscle and the latissimus dorsi, the muscle under the arm, are massively strong and watch can pull the shoulder down phenomenally. So pull the shoulder down while reaching an extended wrist away from as far as possible. Sit up straight, take the head to the side a bit, rest the head on the arm like this and while you keep the shoulder pulled down, very gently take the head to the side like this. And then once you stretch enough on that plane, let the head roll forward, roll forward, Roll forward, still stretching, roll forward, come to here, lift the head up. Other side, pull down, sit up, pull down again, sit up straighter, cradle the head, take the head to the side, pull the shoulders down once more. Just feel the stretch that is to be had today, and then forward and away. Keep the shoulder pressed down, forward and away, forward and away, forward and away, until here, lift the head up, shrug the shoulders. And then breathe in. Try to put your chin in your chest, breathe out, breathe in, and out. Breathe in. Turn. Look at the other leg. Take the head over the first leg. Come back to the centre. Turn. Look at this leg. Take the head over the second leg. Breathe. Come back. Relax. Lift the head up. And the last exercise we'll do for today, I'm going to show you in two forms. Like this, like this, and watch the shoulder movement. Back and down, lift the chest, keep both hips flat on the floor, move this hand round behind you as far as possible, then watch.
beautiful. Slowly around the other way. Now watch this shoulder position. Lift up, across over the, over the ribcage and down. Lift the chest, turn. Lift the chest, use both arms to pull yourself around. Now I personally, that's a, I like this exercise, but for me the one that works the best is like this. This, like this, and my elbow on the outside of the leg. Watch the shoulder again, up, down, over the, over the ribcage I should say, and then down your back. So we're actually pulling the shoulder down with the lats like this, and then watch, lift the chest. Take a breath in. Now, with this much shorter lever on this arm, we're actually able to get shoulders around much further. And also I'm breathing into here, this top right hand side of my chest. I love that. And this is what it looks like on the other side. Move around. Make sure both bottom bands are stuck on the floor. Now, watch this shoulder. Down, over, down. Make sure you're leaning on a bent arm. Bent arm, otherwise the shoulder will not be in the right position. Then watch. Make sure both bottom bones are on the floor. Lift the chest. See how that straightens the middle and the upper back? And then watch. Breathe deeply. Oh, beautiful. And always go back to the first side, just for a gentle one, because we're, we're, when you turn to one side, you're stretching the muscles that turn you in the opposite direction and we're doing work with the ones that are turning you in the first direction so always go back to the last side to make it feel completely comfortable now bring the cushion in position i'll show you how to get into a good sitting position so both bottom bones firmly on the cushion Bring this foot into position. Notice it's just underneath the perineum. Bring this leg into position. Now if you find that you can't rest your legs on something, and by all means put little pillows underneath there, we call it building a nest. Now watch, this is most important. Lean forward like this until your bottom comes off the cushion then gently stick the bottom out. That's the action you should feel, and you should feel a little stretch in both hips when you do that. And then watch, lean back until the bottom just touches the cushion. And now I'm going to lift the trunk up by keeping the body completely straight. Now what's happened is my, you see the spine is much longer than it was before. I've held it straight. I'm, I'm going to actually just play with this. Lean back a bit and you'll find once you go back too far, you'll feel these muscles here tighten very slightly. So once again, lean forward. That'll slacken completely. Lean back, tighten slightly. Now relax the tummy. Put your hands in whatever position you're going to hold the hands in. Now watch this next two things. This chest here, I'm going to lift the chest very slightly, and that straightens the middle and upper back. And then I'm going to bring my head back very slightly. I'm exaggerating these movements. I don't make them as strongly as this when I'm sitting myself. Then I move from side to side, just a little bit, and that is again is to feel exactly where I am, front, back, side, side, and the straightness and balance of the spine. And then last of all, there are two things critically important to do. Let your tummy relax completely, and as soon as you let the tummy relax and go completely soft, you'll feel your weight, the body's weight, will sink into the, the pillow, the cushion, I should say. Then, watch, let the shoulders drop. Everyone thinks they're relaxed, they're definitely trying to be relaxed, but you'll find you can always drop the shoulders a bit more. And then what I normally do is I run the awareness around the following meeting points. Both bottom bones. Is the weight equal on both bottom bones? Yes. Is the stomach relaxed? Yes. Are the shoulders relaxed? Yes. Is the chest lifted very slightly? Yes. Is the head brought back very gently? Yes. We're ready to sit.
please let me know what you think and please give feedback in all the usual places. Thanks very much. Namaste.